And welcome back to the Constitutionals Podcast. I'm your host, Chad White. If you didn't know, this is the premier podcast for the website, cpostcomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. Did it? <laughs> I feel like it just got louder in here, didn't it? Uh, you can probably hear the white noise machine in the background. If you're watching the video, you can see that I am back at the desk. <laughs> I am not at the futon today. Back at the desk with a new pair of headphones. In reality, these headphones are about two years old but i have them for work i got them for work hey listen if you didn't know this is a premiere podcast for the website seaplescomedy.com it's a website where you can go and a whole bunch of things happen uh i'm your host chad white the constitutionals is a show that's been going on for today is 115 episodes and yesterday the time that this episode is being recorded the 27th of june I turned 26 years old. My birthday happened. <laughs> this is the birthday episode. I wanted to record yesterday, but I, I, <laughs> I like I like like anybody who's listened to the show before knows that I like to record when I'm home alone, very peaceful. And here we are, <laughs> a day later, which I was not home alone, but it was good. I had a good birthday, good time. You know, the not a lot of people said happy birthday, but you know, just the people I care about said it, and that's what and that's what it's important. Uh, got a lot of good news yesterday, including, I will, let me just plug in my laptop here. It's, it's going to die. If, well, it's not going to die. The battery's full. Uh, I got some very good news. I do have my passport. I am going on vacation next week out of the country to the great white north. That is Canada. <laughs> and I will be, uh, just, so I need a passport. And I got a passport in under six weeks. <laughs> I mean, I live in Atlanta. I should be able to get a passport in a week. Really, I should be able. To, I should just walk my papers down to the passport office, uh, but that's not how it works with these, uh, with this, with the state, with the government. You gotta, you gotta get a birth certificate. You gotta get a copy of the birth certificate. Copy your driver's license. Uh, copy your social security card. Uh, you gotta do all this other stuff. You gotta pay one hundred and thirty dollars to this to the government. You gotta pay thirty dollars to the state just to get you know the book and everything. And then, then they'll send it to you, maybe, within six to eight weeks. But with my trip coming up the next week, which is next Tuesday, actually, I'll be flying out, I had to go, I had to put a little fire in the step. Like, hey, guys, can you uh, help me out here? I really need this. I did it with a stern, stern, but understanding voice that everybody's working. I'm like, hey, listen, I really need this. Would you please hurry up? <laughs> And the guy was like, "Hey, man, what is that?" He's like, "He said, he said, he said, sir, you'll just you'll have you can tomorrow you can uh, file for will call. You're, you'll be able to pick it up." And I went, "No, that's not how I want to do it. I want to be able to get. I want it. I just just get it. You guys have had it for long enough." And he and he kept repeating the same thing over and over again. And then eventually, I said, "You know, just give me the will call thing." <laughs> he said, "Okay." And then he put me on hold for a, a minute or so, and then. He came back on, he's, and then he's like, okay, you want to talk to my supervisor? I said, yeah, I do. <laughs> and I talked to his supervisor, and then she was understanding, and she's like, sir, it's going to take a while. I was like, I, I understand that, I, but I, what he needs to understand is that it'll be, <laughs> is that I'm <didn't> leaving. <laughs> I needed to be here no later than Monday the 1st. Uh, long story short, I got it. There we go. I'm looking at the GoPro right now. I'm not recording on the other camera, the DSLR. I charged up the battery because I thought I was going to be able to do it tomorrow, yesterday. Uh, but no, I was not alone yesterday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I went to work early. I came home early. I was like, all right, I'm going to record this show. Didn't to no avail. I'm looking at the uh, GoPro camera. And the timer is about 40 seconds ahead of the uh, phone timer that is right next to it, my phone. Speaking of phone things, for this vacation, I got a DJI Osmo Mobile 2. I'm going to be able to put my phone. If you're watching the video, I thought it was on. <laughs> it moved by itself. I thought it was on. If you're watching the video, you can see that it is a, a, a phone gimbal. And it's powered by DJI. It is uh, from DJI. The uh, They make drones, but they also make gimbals. They make it for phones. They make it for cameras. And uh, it's a solid gimbal. And I've wanted this ever since I knew it was coming out. It's got uh, record buttons, mode buttons, all this stuff. Joystick, you can move it. And you say, why do you need this? Uh, because it unlocks potential in your phone to do all these great things, take all these great pictures, uh, create this awesome looking video, all without it shaking and 
It looks good. It looks good and everything. That's what I wanted. Um, $132. <laughs> but you know what? Well worth the money. You know, if I had if I had the money, and, I, and I've been doing this, and I swear to God, I, will, I have topics to, to talk about. <laughs> Believe it or not, I do have to record another episode after this. Uh, probably tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow to Friday when I'm not doing anything, uh, except for working. Um, <clears throat> but do that right on mic too, Chad. You've worked in the entertainment industry for... <laughs> For what three years now? Three years straight? Four years straight? Three years straight? Uh, just do it right into the mic. Just cough into the mic. What was I talking about? Oh, what if I had the money? I would get a Black Magic Cinema Pocket Camera for Pocket Cin- Pocket Camera Cinema 4K. I think that's what it's called. Uh, I've been watching this thing ever since it came out last summer. Last summer around this time, it came out. It's a it's a it's a beautiful camera, beautiful piece of kit. And it's it's about uh, twelve hundred bucks, but you can put on. It's compatible with most lenses. Uh, if not, you can get a speed booster, which makes it compatible with lenses. But speed boosters themselves are like six hundred bucks. Uh, you get a. You can put on, and you can attach all these monitors and things. You're gonna need attached monitors, <laughs> monitors, and external mics and everything. And you can make everything look real nice, real clean, real crisp. If you're a fan of MK, MKBHD. He says crisp a lot. And I would have that camera, and that would be my main camera for C plus comedy. And then I would get like another DSLR, like a Canon M50, and that would be the second camera. And then this GoPro would be destroyed because <laughs> I don't want it anymore. Uh, that being said, I would also like the uh, DJI also released a, uh, a ca- an action camera. The oof, not thought they have an Osmo Pocket, which is just a handheld gimbal by itself, no phone required. But they also have this thing called the, it's not the Karma, because that's the GoPro. What is the camera? I have a computer in front of me. <laughs> Let's see. DJI. Oh, Jesus. It's not even the real thing I need. DJI Action Cam. I believe it is called the DJI Osmo Action. <laughs> 297 for an action camera. I really want it. Okay, let's move on with these things. Uh, so let's, 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 here's a great birthday present. Oh, my friend had a baby. Young, beautiful Annie Kate. Uh, just a gorgeous little baby with chubby cheeks. I can't wait to pinch those cheeks. They already referred to me as Uncle Chad. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm going to be the first black person this baby sees. <laughs> let's move on. One day at a time gets a fourth season at Pop TV. This happened nigh upon five hours ago. And it was a surprise to me that this show was still fighting. I'm so excited. Pop TV, the network that shows mostly Canadian shows, I believe. <laughs> Most only I only know Shits Creek, and I and that, that show was so good. Shits Creek. Uh, Pop TV picked it up for 13 episode season to air sometime in 2020. Uh, what's notable about Pop TV is that it's owned by CBS. CBS aired the original version of One Day at a Time, created by Norman Lear, back in 1975. So it's kind of a full circle thing. This is great. One Day at a Time was canceled by Netflix for low ratings, but it had high critical consensus. And uh, and if it did have low ratings, I guarantee they were consistent. Just like if you watch an episode of... Uh, modern day Simpsons. If you watch an episode of, I assume this is us. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna keep naming. I'm gonna name one thing from every network. It says Fox and NBC, ABC. If you watch an episode of Modern Family or Blackish, if you watch an episode of what's on CBS, Bull, <laughs> SWAT. If you watch any of those shows, I guarantee the shows that have been going on for a minute on network, no less. Guarantee. That they that they have solid ratings, and they're not high ratings, but they're solid. Like Simpsons is probably f- three to four million people per episode. Um, but I, I mean, you just gotta. It's Netflix is aiming for they want to do big swings and they want home runs every time, and that's their issue. That I mean, you cancel a show like Sense Eight, which has which the LGBT community just loves. And uh, and it's but it's not doing well with ratings, and you and you have these contracts where after three seasons, then you have to redo the contract, and if the show's not performing well enough, then and you guys don't want to pay for more of it, you don't want to you know pay actors more and creators more, then 
you cancel it. I mean, that's just the easy way out. Now, three seasons, I'm going to say that, backtrack a little bit. Three seasons is good for a show, for any show. But if you're doing that to every show, if you're canceling Daredevil at four, if you're canceling Luke Cage at two, Jessica Jones at three, then you're not you're not making any sense. I think Jessica Jones at three. I don't know. I, was, I, I stopped watching these things. <laughs> but I'm very excited for one day at a time to live. It's very funny because Netflix is usually the one saving the show. It's like Lucifer. They saved Lucifer for two seasons, and now they're going to end it at season four or five, whichever one says four. Four is coming up. I'm very excited to see. It would. Uh, I would like to have seen it on uh, uh, CBS All Access. I don't know. I know on Shit's Creek. I know they can curse like it's because it's cable. I know they can say the S word, I don't, and I think they can say the F word but only like once or twice. So I, I'm not entirely sure how the rules work. But uh, Pop TV is deep cable, if, I'm, if anything. So I think, I hope they can go, I hope they can be as uh, raw as they were on Netflix. But now, one thing one thing to note is that they had to, they do had, they did have to do budget cuts. And a lot of the writers had already moved on to different shows. So, you know, it's probably going to be a fresh crop of writers, crop of writers. But, uh, you know, the, the actors probably took a cut in pay and maybe the producers took it. Well, definitely the producers took a cut in pay. But uh, it's pretty much going to be the same show, which I'm really excited about. This is uh, interesting from the, art, the rap article. Sony was said to have held a number of conversations to revive the show, including an offer from CBS All Access. Though the stipulation and the original agreement with Netflix gave the company the power to block the show from appearing on other streaming services for a set period following cancellation. Now, what's interesting is... I also read, I think this is, I think I read in the um, Deadline article or the AV Club article that, so season four is premiering next year on Pop TV. And then next year sometime in 2020, viewers are going to be able to watch the original first three seasons from the Netflix show on CBS. So there we go. I mean, why would you hide this show? If you if you're gonna be so stingy with the streaming right with the airing rights the network rights, then just bring it back. <laughs> Truly, sincerely, I know it's a money thing. Just bring it back, Netflix. <laughs> but you lost your chance. This is why you shouldn't. You know, I mean, you know, we got one day at a time standing up to Netflix. We got uh, Ron Funches standing up to Netflix, saying that that you don't tell him what what funny is. Do it. We got to keep doing this. Moving on, this comes from, oh, that article was written by, I was on the wrap, and it was written by, I got to give props to the writers, Reed Nakamura. Next up, from Gizmodo, I know, James Whitbrook. But this is where I first saw it, so I want to give uh, credit to where credit is due. DC is killing Vertigo. This happened last week, right after I ended the podcast. <laughs> uh, on Friday, I think, I believe. Uh, DC, yeah, is killing Vertigo Comics. DC uh, Comics uh, had Vertigo for a very long time, and it was kind of their place where it was like it was like hor- realistic horror, not horror, but like yeah, realistic horror based w- w- stuff, and and uh, it was a really adult contemporary. <laughs> That's a type of music. Uh, it's where Sandman and Lucifer and I forgot what other comics were there. Well, really don't see did. Let's see, because I can definitely pull this up. <laughs> why the Last Man? I was thinking that in my head. Uh, Preacher, not Lucifer, is Preacher. Preacher and Why the Last Man and Sandman uh, and Fables. Those are the ones that I know. I was thinking Why the Last Man. I promise you, I was thinking it. I'm not lying. I was thinking it, and I said to myself, "Say Why the Last Man," but I want to be wrong in front of the, all of my viewers. <laughs> all of them. Oh God. DC confirmed that January 2020 Vertigo is going to be done. Uh, and that includes the Sandman Universe spinoffs. So there's a bunch of spinoffs there. Um, and they're either going to finish up the Sandman, the current books, uh, including the Sandman Universe spinoffs. We'll either finish up or transition over to the newly updated version of DC's current black label line. Now here's a, here's a stipulation. Stipulation. Here's a here's a new wrinkle in the story. Replacing Vertigo, of course, they have to replace Vertigo. You can't just cancel something and uh, not have the same imprint. You want to have like if DC cancels Superman, they're going to introduce another Superman. 
you know, Marvel cancels Spider Man, there's gonna be another Spider Man. You gotta you gotta keep this stuff, you gotta keep things in the zeitgeist. <laughs> it's two different things. <laughs> I don't know why I named those superheroes versus this other thing. Replacing Vertigo. The, uh, side note, these headphones, I, I sound super bassy in them. <laughs> Very bassy. It sounds like my regular voice compared to those crappy headphones I got as a promotion from uh, Nerdist Music when that was a thing. I, you had to follow them on Twitter and, and you tweet at them and you get a free care package from the movie Dope. <laughs> and guess who won? <laughs> I have an extra large shirt in my closet that I've worn maybe twice. And that was about, uh, what year, 2019? What year did I graduate college? Boy, oh boy, that was like four years ago at this point. 2015. Yeah, 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 okay. Replacing Vertigo, Zoom, and Ink, because they canceled Zoom and Ink 2, which is which are also imprints of comics. Uh, there's going to be three new age uh, banded. There's going to be new, three new age banded. <laughs> Not new age banded. New age banded labels for all of DC Comics's content. DC Kids for readers 8 to 12, DC for readers 13 and above, and DC Black Label for 17 and above. I mean, that's as streamlined as it can get. And I wonder cuz they canceled New 52 and then they have this this uh, new universe, you know. And then they're canceling that for this. Or I can only assume that that this is getting that the that this universe after New Fifty Two was canceled for this because they relaunched back in twenty sixteen restructured in twenty sixteen or something like that I don't know I don't read comics anymore uh, I mean this is this is, this is not uh, it's not a good sign for comics but you know comics have to move with the times and I'm sure that things on Vertigo yeah you know what iZombie and Lucifer were part of it. I knew Lucifer was part of it. iZombie was part of it too, Constantine. Uh, this is very, I mean, I mean, it's, you know, uh, Vertigo is selling, as I just read, Lucifer, iZombie, and Constantine were, uh, were just, they're big parts of Vertigo. And then now, and they were all successful uh, shows, except for Constantine, that got canceled on NBC. <laughs> but the character lives on in the Arrowverse. Uh, in cartoon and in live action form, played by the same guy. Um, Preacher is a successful show, even though it's ending. <laughs> uh, Why the Last Man is becoming a show. Fables was a video game from a now defunct company. Uh, Why the Last Man's going to FX, and I don't, I don't know what's happening with Sandman. I don't know if anything's happening, but these things are very popular, and it's. I can only venture as much to say of probably sales that is why. It, uh, and then and that it's just ever that everything's so different. Uh, when you look at Marvel, I don't think they have a lot of a lot of different. Um, I don't want to say uh, arms. I, I I I would I would think that they don't have a lot of arms. Uh, versus the, you know DC, we again Zoom, uh, Ink, Bla- the Black Label, all these all these different things. Let's see. Mm, yeah, it doesn't look like Marvel has. So they have Disney Kingdoms, Marvel Comics, Marvel Press, and then Icon, which I, th- ooh, Icon, creator owned. What is this? Icon, oh, that's Hit Girl. Oh, yeah, yeah, Hit Girl. Okay. Painkiller, Powers. Gee, who's, who was reading Powers? Remember when Powers was a TV show, but only on PlayStation? <laughs> and that lasted, I think, two seasons. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure because I have the first episode on PS4 because I and I was so excited to watch it. Uh, yeah, two seasons. Two seasons were produced starring I think it was Charto Cobbley. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh my gosh, I don't think you can. And it was only on PlayStation Network, and I don't think you can watch those shows anywhere because you can't buy it. Because I for sure recently looked like as 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 long as as short as you know maybe a couple of weeks ago. I turned on. I was digging through my PS4. Looking for stuff to do on it because I don't play games anymore. Basically, <laughs> all right. Anyway, uh, Infinite Comics and Timely Comics. So they have they have different imprints, but oh, well, that one hasn't printed. It doesn't look like uh, Infinite Comics has printed anything recently. And Timely Comics, uh, <laughs> it doesn't look like anything's happened to that one. <laughs> yeah, defunct 1950. So I think maybe they just want to uh, be up here to be as streamlined as Marvel is, you know, 
Uh, but again, it took them seven years to realize that they don't need to create a universe, a movie universe. Now they have worlds of DC. You don't need a DC extended universe. Now they have worlds of DC in the movies. The TV show has Arrowverse. You don't need all these different things. Just be different. Be different. <sighs> it truly doesn't make sense to me. I mean, Ver- and Vertigo, besides DC Comics, Vertigo is the biggest thing in the DC lineup itself. Like, if I say Vertigo, if I if I went to, not even a comic shop, if I went to, you know, into my office building, and I said, hey, you know Vertigo Comics? Why the Last Man? Sandman? Lucifer? Eye Zombie? <laughs> Someone would go, yeah, I know, I know those things. Stupid. Next up, uh, Spotify says it paid artists too much and it wants its money back. This is from Engadget, written by AJ Dillinger. Spotify, the company, the only streaming company that is in the green right now, uh, the only streaming company, well, no, I think because Netflix has a really good stock, uh, but uh, one of the only streaming companies with really good, with decent stock, uh, <laughs> The only streaming company that's making that's pot the only streaming company that is positively making money at this point in time. The highest, the most subscribed to music streaming service in the world with a hundred million users and counting and growing. Says that it paid artists too much money. The <laughs> I remember a couple of years. Remember, remember, just maybe even last year, people were complaining. Not people, artists were complaining that Spotify wasn't paying them enough. Now Spotify is like, "Hey, we're paying too much." <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, the entire issue stems from a decision made by the U.S. Copyright Royalty Board (CRB) that would mandate higher payouts for streaming content. The increase, which would affect services like Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora, and others would raise royalties by 43.8% over the next five years. Spotify, which reportedly pays out uh, 0.006 to 0.0084 cents. So, like a a sixth of a sixth of a sixth per stream of a penny, per stream, split between rights holders, songwriters, publishers, and so on, has fought against the new royalty rates, claiming they would harm, quote, both music licensees and copyright owners owners. complicating the matter is a bit of complexity relating to how discounted student and family members uh, family descriptions are treated under the new revenue plan music business worldwide reports that the agreement requires family plans to be counted as 1.5 subscribers per month (laughs) and students be counted as 0.5 subscribers per month if you're listening to this is so stupid if you're listening to music you are counted as a listen. It should, and especially with this whole BS streaming thing where a uh, thousand listens is one buy. Uh, you should be one person. It's it's one thing. This whole point, this fraction thing, is ruining the industry, especially when it comes to billboards. And in terms of billboards, and maybe maybe DJ Khaled will be better off if if we all had one listen. Because he was complaining about it. That, I, I seriously, that, 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 that does take me off. It's so stupid. Based on Spotify's calculations, the company says it overpaid songwriters and publishers and now it wants that money back. That, <laughs> that's like saying, that's like, uh, like going to a, playing, playing basketball with your friends and you're, they're, they're using your basketball and they're like, oh, uh, Steve's here. Hey, hey, why don't you sit this one out and so Steve can play? And then you're like, no, it's my ball though. It's my ball. I, you guys gonna get? Where are you guys gonna get a ball if I leave? I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna go ahead and go. That's so stupid, Spotify. That is the dumbest thing in the world. I can't believe that. And now, admittedly, I never read the story. That makes me so angry. You're you're barely paying somebody. Like, what if I was a SoundCloud artist and I came? or Bandit Camp, and I came over, and I put myself on Spotify, and I wanted to make money, and and I made $100. And you were like, no, 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 no. You got to give us 20 back. Oh, my God, that's so stupid, Spotify. You're, you, uh, grow up. Grow up. Just be better. Stop. Don't make a speaker. 
ask Google to buy you. I remember, I remember, well, I remember Google offered to buy Spotify, and Spotify it's like no, and now Spotify is the best streaming service in the world, leading streaming service in the world. I'm not gonna say best. I actually signed up for this. every every summer. Spotify offers three months for ten dollars for people who haven't had it uh, two months prior to the to the offer, and I signed up. Uh, <laughs> getting down to the last days, and I signed up, uh, and so now I'm switching back between back and forth between Google Play Music. And Spotify. Uh, I just got a notification to handle something on about something. <laughs> <coughs> but I think it's really it's really interesting because uh, Spotify looks and sounds so much better and just works. But it's so convoluted to get to everything, to get to your downloads, to look at a specific album to only see your downloads to I don't want to listen to podcasts so and, and so I got to navigate through that stuff but they have the best playlists the playlists are so good when compared to you know Google Play Music which that where the radio is just horrible the radio stations that they choose and you and you can on Spotify you can see all the songs in the playlist and they have these great tailored playlists and then Google Play Music you look at it and it's <laughs> you can't get past like four songs. You're all grayed out at the bottom and you have to go to that last one and, and listen to it. And, and it, yeah, it's stupid. Uh, and last thing, which is probably the main thing I should spend a lot of time on, but we're at a, we're at minute 26. It's my birthday. I'll keep going. <laughs> this comes from variety. Michael Schneider. My good friend. Amazon's branding problem. New networks aim for noms and more last minute Emmy notes. So this is, uh, we're winding down. July 16th, the Emmys will have been announced. Um, all the four-year consideration events have led up to this moment in time. The screeners, all this good stuff. And uh, Mr. Schneider of Rev Variety is now taking a look at the most important aspects of these last couple of weeks. So Amazon, the first thing is Amazon is having real trouble with branding itself. Uh, people know Netflix. If you can say, I'm going to go home and Netflix. Netflix is a verb. Netflix is something you do, you watch, you see, you say. <laughs> Netflix, Netflix, Netflix. <laughs> I should really tell this episode. I'm not going to title it this, though. Title it this, though. There it is. Okay. Uh, but Amazon has been trying to reach, I just licked my lips <laughs> and it did not feel natural, <laughs> but I did it so slightly. I don't even know if you can see it behind the microphone. Uh, but Amazon has been trying to rebrand itself essentially. And it's, it's people don't know what to call it though. They don't know what to call a service. Netflix, you call Netflix, Netflix, Hulu, you call Hulu, Hulu, uh, even crackle is crackle. <laughs> Who is using crackle? If you're using crackle, I would love for you to reach out to me, email, email C plus comedy and I will, I'll reach out and, and I want to talk to you. <laughs> and why, why are you using crackle? It's a free service and blah, blah, blah. I really like super mansion. <laughs> Super Mansion's a great show. <laughs> Just want to see some stop motion superheroes, elderly superheroes, starring Brian Cranston and some other famous people. So Amazon rebrand is going to brand itself as, or did as Amazon Prime Video. That's the, that's what the problem is. No one knows if you call it Amazon Video or Amazon Prime Video or just Amazon. It's uh, he writes it's the most one of the most powerful brands in the world, but the but for the folks behind Amazon's entertainment offerings, it has been a source of ongoing brand confusion. <laughs> uh, Amazon Studios produces original shows and films. You know that's where you get um, One Man in the Sea, where <laughs> the Casey Affleck movie was called that I keep telling myself I'm going to watch, but I never will. One if I land. Manchester by the Sea. I made that joke on News Time. I called it. I said one if by land. I used to do catchphrases, and I said one if by land. Manchester by the Sea. Uh, <laughs> but it's called Manchester by the Sea. I think I don't know. I'm not gonna look it up. And then Amazon Prime Video 
is a specific portion of Amazon Prime devoted to to streaming shows and, and movies from Amazon Studios and the others. <laughs> no one knows what to call it. It's very important that you are able to say, "Hey, go watch that." That Jeff Bezos or whoever is able to say, "Go watch this show." Go watch the Lord of the Rings show on Amazon Prime. They should just call it Prime Video. Or it's Amazon Prime Video. I think, I don't know what the app is called. Let me see what the app is called on my phone. The app is called Prime Video. Go with a consensus. Prime Video is easy. Because if you say Amazon, people are going to say, oh, like the app that I work and shop for things. Okay. It's just complicated, whatever. Uh, next up, BYU TV and Facebook Watch among newbies trying to break in. Oh, this is, uh, I, I skimmed this one last week. This is talking about how difficult it can be for, uh, again, brand recognition. For an, a younger upstart like Facebook <laughs> to get in <laughs> to the TV world. But Facebook did, did have some really good offerings for uh, television. They had the Red Table Talk from Jada Peek and Smith. And then they also had that show with Elizabeth Olsen uh, that I'm forgetting that that people seem to love Facebook. Uh, it is called Sorry for Your Loss. And people love that show. It's a, and it's crazy. And she did this. She was a three-year process, apparently, according to Google. Uh, but now BYU TV, which I assume is Brigham Young Television, <laughs> University Television, <laughs> is uh, yeah Brigham Young <laughs> University. Wow. Uh, they had a show called Studio C. Let's see what that looks like. BYU TV Studio C. That's really cool that they that they have a show that they're so proud of. That wow that has. Really? Oh, it's on season nine? Oh, my God. <laughs> but people really love this. Wow. Holy crap. It's uh, and it's probably all Mormons that like it. It's a sketch comedy show that is... I'm looking at a video that's extremely dark. Oh, there's a black man in this. Oh, okay. Holy crap. Look at the views on this. Okay, I'll stop. I guess I'm doing this. Well, there we go. Oh, and, and even Kenan Thompson hosted an episode of Studio C. Wow. That's crazy. And they had a variety special and all this stuff. Well, good for them. Good for them. So Facebook and uh, BYU TV are trying to break into the Emmy race. And uh, it's a, it's hard, but it's they think it's going to pay off. I think, Jesus, I understand that. I've said this before. I understand that it is that you want as much money as possible. But if I were Apple, if I were Facebook, I would just produce the shows for somebody else. It was, oh boy, that's a loud vibration. <laughs> I would just produce the shows for somebody else. Like I, though, I wouldn't say the money would be negligible, but if I could produce, if I didn't have to do in-house stuff, I would just, I would just go, Hey, you take care of this. I'll sit. I'll sit in the back. I'll. I'll. I'll help fund it. But you take care of this, and I promise you, it's going to be good. Like, sorry for your loss. Without having to see a trailer, with only seeing a picture of Elizabeth Olsen in the show, I would say that would look good on uh, Hulu. Maybe even Amazon. <sighs> for <laughs> for whatever Apple's doing, that could live on all three platforms. All three major platforms. You can live on uh, HBO. Whatever Disney Plus is doing. Well, I mean, Disney Plus is trying to be not a substitute, but trying to be one of the main ones, too. One of the four. Uh, and also notes, this is the last year for screeners. Their last traditional year for screeners. Well, hopefully we'll see. But there's, there's a uh, stunt that uh, Funny or Die is doing with screeners. Where it is <laughs> taking all of the and DVD and screeners are uh, DVDs that people in the academy, both the film and the television academy, get in the mail. Uh, they're physical DVDs, sometimes full seasons of shows, uh, definitely full movies, but sometimes one or two episodes of shows or full seasons. And 
I mean, you just have them forever. <laughs> you know, they're just they're taking up room. Uh, but the problem is that a lot of these shows are available on streaming now, uh, and so you really don't need screeners. But if if uh, if someone if you if you want your show to be considered for or movie if you want your show or movie to be considered for an award, uh, then it's good to have a, that someone has a hard copy because they're gonna look over there. Like I, I can turn around and say, oh. Oh, there's there's Watchmen. I should watch Watchmen uh, and try to consider it. You know, there's there's happy endings. You know, there's happy endings over at the Chappelle show. I should watch that for the Emmys versus me going um, versus me being on Netflix and going, oh, what was that show uh, with the Latin family and they were Mexican or something, uh, which they're not. <laughs> but are they? Oh, Jesus. They're Cuban. Uh, they're, you know, like, like they're Mexican or something, and it's uh, it's like two days at a time or two days to go, something like that. So, if as long as you have screeners, uh, physical screeners, people are going to be able to notice you. Uh, and I mean, and, and you know, once once HBO and Netflix and NBC and and Comedy Central, once they decide that screeners should be kaput, then everybody else will follow along. But it's and I just picked out those people at random. Those those companies at random. Don't think that it was <laughs> NBC, Netflix, <laughs> like NBC and Netflix and HBO or the, the and Comedy Central are deciding factors. But Funny or Die did a thing where they just wrote out the titles of shows that should be nominated for Emmys with uh, screeners of other shows. That's it. <laughs> but uh, screeners are screeners are going to be out. Listen, uh, this is episode's gone on too long. It is my birthday. <laughs> it's the day after my birthday. I want to get back to watching whatever it is I was watching. If you like what you heard here, why don't you head on over to the website, SeabullsComedy.com, where you can see all of the episodes of this show. Of this, Yeah, listen to all episodes of this podcast. Watch every episode of this show. Most of it from episode 60 onward. Uh, you can also watch all that stuff on YouTube.com slash SeabullsComedy, where they're the premiere show called News Time. News Time is a weekly news show where I take a topic and I take a deep dive into it. Uh, since I will be gone for a week, I have to record. Hold on. This 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 week's episode of News Time was about the LGBTQ community since it was Pride Month. Uh, I'm really proud about this episode. Uh, and and their and their and how Hollywood is not doing the greatest to cater to them, but Hollywood is definitely trying. I uh, my source was a variety feature that came out last week called The Power of Pride. I urge you to read everything that was in that feature and then check out this episode of News Time. It's I think it's pretty good. Uh, so I have to shoot two episodes of News Time, one for next week, which I will be here for, and then one for the week after, which I will not be here for. But they're both YouTube based. They're about they're both about YouTube, and uh, I have one written already. And I have to write another one tomorrow, and then I will be. And I have to shoot them, and I have to edit them, and then I'll be done, because <laughs> that's how that works. <laughs> and I have to shoot an episode of uh, this show for next week. But then the week after that, I'll have to shoot an episode. I'll do it when I get back, because I'll be back in time. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna. Oh, the debates! I want to talk about the debates. Oh my gosh, the presidential debates! Really quick, the presidential debates. <laughs> The first round was last night, and the second round is tonight. Uh, what a great way to spend the last hour of my birthday. Last year, I was my birthday watching that. It was just a cluster F if I didn't know one. Uh, a lot of people stood out to me. Elizabeth Warren, Cory Booker, uh, uh, Julian Castro. Um, uh, I kept reading things about de Blasio, how he was he was so arrogant in a New York manner. New York, and, and apparently, a lot of New Yorkers, New Yorkers hate de Blasio. But then I also... I also like in those same at the in the same breath, you know, people that were talking about De Blasio were like, well, but he was he stood out and he kind of won that debate. <laughs> I mean, except for Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren, she did a really good job. But uh, Klobuchar and Ainsley and <laughs> Tim Ryan, just so many different people that shouldn't be here. <laughs> it should be it should be Booker and Warren and. Sanders and Biden and uh, uh, you know I like Kamala Harris but I don't I don't know where she stands on a lot of things 
But there's a lot of there's a lot of people up there that shouldn't have been up there. Uh, anyway, just get get used to politics. It's gonna be here. We have nine hundred and this is on the Daily Show. Trevor Noah said, "I think we have like nine hundred and thirty something days until the elections." So, I mean, either either stay out of it or just get in it. You gotta know something. Very interesting. <laughs> very very interesting. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. I'm gonna get back to this. I love you. Goodbye.